Hello everyone. Uh, I am Chef Bobette Davis. I have been a vegan now since 1990. Um, I own a vegan restaurant called Stuff I Eat in Inglewood, California. So what led you to be vegan? Why would you do that? You know, my journey to veganism uh, came after I met my current husband, Rondell Davis. When we went on our very first date, he first took me to Griffith Park. And if any, any of you know anything about Griffith Park, it's full of inclines. It is the most amazing workout. And of course, I wasn't doing very much when I met him. And he took me to Griffith Park and we ran this entire, well, he ran the whole thing backwards. I walked and complained uh, past the observatory. I think it was about 1,650 feet straight up. And I thought to myself, if this guy can run this thing backwards, one day I'm gonna be able to run it, maybe at a walker's pace, but staying in a running mode, and I can do that right now. But he also shared my first vegan meal with me. He prepared it. And um, I knew then, after I ate and felt the way that I felt after I ate, because I always had horrible issues with indigestion and food not breaking down properly. After I ate that meal, I felt amazing for the first time in years. And I knew then I was going to transition. Wow, so one meal, huh? One meal made the difference. I didn't, I didn't burp after the meal, that was huge. You know, in terms of what, why I transitioned so quickly after the first date, I really didn't know very much about veganism when I met him. But I knew that as I ate, um, I was always miserable after the meal. Uh, a lot of um, heartburn, uh, just a, a lack of knowledge on how to nourish myself, what meat, foods to eat together. So I never really had any idea that I was going to transition until that first date. Wow. And has ethics played a role in this at all? You know, when I first transitioned, I didn't think about not one animal. I thought about my personal um, digestive issues, my skin challenges. I thought about myself. It was not until years later that I actually began to understand the enormity of oneness on the planet and how every living being is a part of that oneness. And so we all have a responsibility to love and care, not for not only ourselves, but for everyone. How significant is that in, in regard to vegan, your veganism right now? Um, the oneness, the whole caring for our planet home, caring for other sentient beings, uh, have challenges killing a spider in the house a lot even especially in the restaurant I'll take them and move them outside with a Kleenex it's just about honoring life if you will life is everything to me so even eating life I mean I people are vegans but a lot of times all they eat is death even practicing a vegan diet uh, my because they're not raw you mean yeah, it's not live. Well, as soon as you subject your food to temperatures over 115 degrees Fahrenheit, you've killed the life in that food. And so life begets life, death begets death. I am a living being, so I need to eat life to be at my best. Mm, wow, yeah. Do you find that this might be challenging in a world that's not consistent with your beliefs overall? I find that the lack of knowledge is what's challenging in our world today. Um, lies are challenging to our world today. Um, greed is challenging to our world today. The um, need for power is also challenging to our world today. So we have a lot of challenges in our world. I just feel like we all need to take a moment and understand where we live and who we are. Um, how do you cope I, with that? I, I don't know. I'm gonna tell you, this is, this is how I handle my life. 
I'm responsible for what I'm responsible for, and I make sure I honor that responsibility. I cannot take care of everyone on the planet. I can share knowledge, I can share experiences, and I can do my part, and that's all I have. Wow. Do you do anything else to stay grounded, like uh, meditation and stuff like that? Well, um, meditation is, is extremely important. The only reason I wound up with a vegan restaurant is because I went to Japan to do some singing, and I meditated the whole time I was there. When you're in Japan, that's what you do. I came home, and everything I brought to myself through the power of meditation is still there. And now I have a restaurant, now I'm here in Florida. Now, I, you know, life has just been everything that I could imagine. And at 72 years old, I have my moments, but I also have the knowledge on how to come back to the present time and stay current and, and know who I am as an individual and not submit myself to unnecessary pain because of what someone on the outside has said to me or done. But bet, stay focused and be on your purpose. Do you think that some of this might be why some people have a hard time staying vegan because they're not capable of staying grounded like you're talking about here? You know, I, I feel like we have challenges living. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We just have challenges living. And I also know that when you're ready to do something, I have a girlfriend that started her vegan journey in the 70s. That's before anybody even, was vegan even a word back then? But, and she's still into it today. It's when you're ready, when you're ready and you really get it and you, you really embrace it, you don't, you, you don't lose it. I will never, eat animal flesh, the blood, the mucus, the disease, the, I will never, ever, ever revisit that way of life. That's not who I am. Any physiological changes that occurred after you went vegan? What changed in my life was um, my inability to digest food. Mm -hmm. Because of knowledge, I learned what foods to eat together and what foods not to eat together. So that helped with the digestive issues. Also, I had really horrible skin and um, changing took care of that as well. So, you know, I'm a woman, I'm vain. Of course, you know, you wanna have pretty skin and I was a hot mess. I couldn't even wear anything backless. The diet cared for all of that. Got rid of, because I was addicted to refined sugar. So I didn't just give up animal products. I gave up refined sugar, dyes, preservatives, all of that stuff I, I got rid of, and uh, yeah, so here I am. Are you 100% raw? No, I am not 100% raw. I have a, um, a restaurant called Stuff I Eat in Inglewood, California that serves mainly a transitional menu, and I am the only chef at the moment. So yes, I ingest cooked food, but my preference is live food okay. overall. So what's a typical day look like of eating for you, an ideal day? An ideal day is first, um, when, when I get to work, I have a big industrial juicer, a big Ruby's juicer, so my breakfast is always juice. M unless I'm in Florida and I have to go to Wawa's and get a couple of bananas and some orange juice. <laughs> but uh, generally, I start my day off with, with a green drink. That's usually breakfast. I'm at work prepping food. And then once I'm done with that, I usually head over to a trainer. She's here today and uh, get a training on. And then think about ingesting more solid food after I'm done with that, which usually it's very simple for me because I can just stop by stuff I eat, put together a massive salad if I like, and because I've got enough raw pieces to go with it and I'm good for the day. I just don't ingest a lot. I like, I can make a handful of nuts a meal. You know what I mean? Um, and at 72, I just think we don't eat as much as we used to. It's not it's like you're not always thinking about food. And I don't sit down to massive plates of food. It's too much. After I've had a taste of this, this, and this, I'm good. Yeah. I have had enough. So 
eating is just not an issue any longer, if you will. One person I spoke with, he's 72 also. Mm -hmm. um, and he's been vegan his whole life, actually. Wow, uh, lucky guy. Mark, Mark Huberman, I don't know if you wow. know him. Uh, but yeah, he, food is just fuel to do great things, you know. That's it. Yeah. Do you think raw is a practical endeavor? I think most, I, I think most people in our society would have a challenge with 100% live diet um, because of our palates, because of the way we were raised. A lot of times we're misinformed and that's unfortunate. We don't know how to seek the information for ourselves. We just grab hold of whatever. And most of the convenient places that you might want to go out and eat out or you don't want to have to prep food yourself, they're all, they're all killing food. They're all killing the food. So I, I don't know. I just really don't know in our society if we'd ever, as a matter of fact, we, we've reached a point where the consumption of animal products is unsustainable. But the number of people getting on an, eating animals is going up. It's not going down. We're getting a, a larger number of vegans, yes. People are eating animals. And it's unsustainable. And the planet is showing us this is not going to work. What you're doing is not healthy for yourselves or for the whole. And that's why it brings back the whole, brings back all of it. It's not just about you or myself. It's about all of it. Could you be with somebody who isn't vegan? That's challenging. It's a smell. It's a, it's a taste. It's, it's challenging. Mm -hmm. What about family? Uh, do you, are you able to convince them? I have tried for years and years and years, and I can practically count on one hand the number of people that actually transitioned. Uh -huh. What have you found to be most successful as far as trying to influence others? Me. The fact that I don't even have a primary care physician. The fact that when I turned 72 years old, I did 100 push-ups in my restaurant in front of my customers. I've got young grandchildren that can't do two, five push-ups. You know what I mean? So I think I am the best example. But people will look at you and be like, wow, can you hand me that piece of chicken? So really and truly, it's just about, it's about self. I mean, they can believe it, but it doesn't really mean that that's, that's the journey that they're going to take. And this whole thing called life is an experience. It's a journey for each and every one of us. And some of us will go through it and learn a lot and, and give back a lot. And others will just be selfish and dumb. And I don't mean that to sound cruel. I really don't. But ignorance is ignorance. And when we eat and kill ourselves, that can only be dumb. It's certainly not practicing self-love and self-care. It's funny you should mention the word dumb. And I know it's not the most preferable or professional word to use, but I recently put out a video called Carnivorism is Dumb. How else are you going to describe it? But how cruel is it to go out and murder animals yeah. for a diet that you shouldn't be ingesting anyway? Mm -hmm. That I mean, who cares if you use the word dumb? You could use the word dumb, you could use the word cruel, you could use the word mean, yeah, ignorant. ignorant. They're all words and they all mean, come on, we can do better. So you have a quote you want to share real quick? Well, the only thing that I would suggest um, is loving of self and understanding your connection with the oneness on this planet. So practice self-love, self-care, and uh, embrace the whole. And is that a quote? That's the quote I gave you. <laughs> That's and, my quote. And can we find you online? How is the best way to find you online? Find me on Chef Babette on Instagram. That's a really popular page for me right now. Something janky happened to my Facebook page. But Babette Davis is still available on Facebook. TikTok, I don't know if we're going to have TikTok or not, but I'm Chef Babette on TikTok. I don't do uh, some of those other ones. But yeah, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok are the three. And your restaurant has a domain name too, probably? Yes, yeah, Stuff I Eat. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. it. I can't wait to visit. 
And is there any last minute encouraging words you want to wrap this up with? You know, the encouragement is, uh, it all just goes back to the most important thing that we were created in and of, and that's love. And I think that is what we're lacking more uh, on this planet today than anything is love, love of self, love of the whole. So my encouragement is know you, be still, know who you are, and love. Well, I love everything that you're doing and about, and you're amazing. So it's an honor to have you here, and I Thank hope you. to visit you in L.A. Thank you so much. And, oh, we got, it would be a, a miss to not mention where we're at. Oh, yeah, we are right now in Fort Lauderdale, Florida at the convention center, yes? Yeah, yeah. And we're having a big... The Vegan Health and Fitness Expo. There you go. Yeah. Health and Fitness Expo. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Thank All you right. for being here. All right. Thank you, sweetheart.